Ethan Lee. I've taken an immediate dislike to these people. <laughs> Kathy Griffin. We like it actually when you just stand in our presence and then we can boss you around and judge you. And Tracy Morgan. You look like sexy chocolate to me. Okay, you know what? Tom. We have a man down. Repeat. You're okay. Man down. Okay. Don't eat it. Say, you your are teeth right are going to fall out. Stay on your path. Not until you identify the meat. A complete collision of culture, gender, and sexual orientation. You're gayer than I am. I know. I just want to point out that Tracy has hit on every wife in the story and now a statue. Yeah, you better be careful, Nathan Lane. You might be next. <laughs> Ref, Tom Papa. Hi, and welcome to the Marriage Ref. I'm Tom Papa. You know, there's nothing more fun than watching a married couple struggle with a problem that's got nothing to do with you. So why not sit back, relax, and watch someone else grind it out? Well, panel, thank you for being here. Welcome, welcome. We're going to watch some arguments. We're going to have some arguments. And then I'm going to end it all by making the call. So here we go. Let's emerge from our chrysalis and flutter into the butterfly capital of the world. <laughs> Coconut Creek, Florida. It really is. <laughs> and meet the Hankersons. Rosalind wants to play a lonely game, but doesn't want to be alone. I met Rosalind through her brother in the army. I've always had this thing for men in uniform. You know, we made each other laugh. I didn't wait for him to propose. I didn't want him to get away. So I proposed to him, and he said yes. What does solitaire mean? It's a one-person game. It's a one-person game? Yeah. Why would you call me in the room with you to watch you play a one-person game? I told you how I feel about when I'm playing solitaire and every single time you take over the game. I, that solitaire to me is a single-person game. What you're saying don't make sense. It don't make sense. I would consider putting the game away, Craig, if I felt like you were serious about spending time with me. I think you have other stuff on your mind. Are you a psychologist? I never knew these things about you. I never knew that you could ask a question and answer it. <laughs> You're sitting playing solitaire. You're asking me to come in there and spend time with you. Hey, why don't you come in the room with me? I sit next to you. Hey, what you doing? Oh, I'm just playing this game. <laughs> hey, Rob, why don't you put the four on that five? Hey, don't help me. I want you in the room with me to spend time with me. Get it? I get that you're trying to spend time with solitaire. Because why? solitaire, what is that? solitaire is a one. So here's the issue. Should he have to sit and watch her play solitaire because she considers it spending time together? She wants him to stand there. Stand there. I'm really trying to... Is there any help for them? <laughs> stand there? Stand there. Yeah, we like it. We like it, actually, when you just stand in our presence, and then we can boss you around and judge you. <laughs> Thank you. You got to keep moving. But why, Kathy, why do men... Women always want the man in physical view. Yeah, we want is, you around. Is and if we could, we would put some uh, low jack or some sort of tracking device on you. But why do you want us around? Because that's the only time you absolutely know right. we're not we cheating. Yeah, we don't trust you. <laughs> At all. And not you need the whole respect. guy there. You got to see... We, all... want, we want him there, and we want him paying attention to us, but not really bothering us. Not so. that dude. What? what do you mean? Not that dude. Well, he's a little... Who he's going to cheat with? <laughs> Well, um, you know, I, I, it seems a little passive aggressive that she is insisting he join her at solitaire. It just doesn't make any sense whatsoever. But, but I, did, I did like the trampolining at the beginning because they were kind of spooning and trampolining. Yeah. We also like that. We like if you stand behind us and bounce on something with a lot of play and springs. <laughs> or is that just me? Is that just me? All right. Do you have a favorite game you play on the computer? Well, porn and, uh, <laughs> uh, you know, and, and, and just checking out the news. And... <laughs> <laughs> is there any more to this Yes, there tape? is. Before we go any further, we just saw the Hankersons argue through a card game. Now they've got bigger fish to fry. 
you go fishing every single day. If you have 20 minutes before work, Craig, you're fishing. If you would only go fishing, you would be a happier person. I don't want to go fishing. Fishing, it just relaxes me. It's rough out here in this world today, and you know, different people turn to different things. If Charlie Sheen liked fishing, if Tiger Woods liked fishing, if they were fishing instead of doing what they were doing when they got in trouble, they wouldn't be in trouble. What woman have to always tell their husband she wants to spend time with them? You should be taking me somewhere. I'm trying to take you somewhere. Where? Fishing. I hate fishing. I don't like it. It's hot <laughs> You out like there. to eat fish. So? You just made me right. You can be out in, in the mother nature, join the nature, the, looking at the water, the birds flying by. You could be so happy. I want us to be back where we were when we first met. That's what I'm telling you. I don't sleep with the fish. You may as well. You're gone enough. You know how I'm going to show you that I'm not neglecting you? I'm going to give you some fish in a few minutes. I'm going to feed you. Craig, everything goes your way. I might be watching Craig. Lifetime or something. What do you do? You pick up the remote. I am the not TV sitting there watching home. those man bashing shows. No. Lifetime is real no, life no. stuff. Fishing is real life stuff. It relaxes me. It gets I, my mind okay, off so another, all this other so stuff that's you, going on So you're world. saying fishing makes you feel better than me then? I, I'm not fishing. saying that, but, but. If I was fishing right now, I wouldn't be arguing with you. Am I crazy, or is this the exact same issue with the other spouse and a different activity? Yes. Why can't you watch me play cards? Why can't you watch me fish? So I'm assuming they've never heard of the game Go Fish. <laughs> This is, there's no woman that wants to watch him fish or join him fishing. There's no fun in fishing. I'm not married anymore because of solitaire and fishing. <laughs> Those are signs, Greg. They say the number one reason for divorce is money, but it turns out it's solitaire. Solitaire and fishing. <laughs> it's an epidemic Although, that, thank God, you're he, shining a light on. He did come up with a great slogan for Lifetime, uh, man bashing since 1993. Yes. <laughs> She is so wrong about that. Lifetime is a fantastic channel that does, in fact, deal with real life situations. And always ends with the guy dying. Oops. <laughs> <laughs> he shouldn't have pissed me off. Do you go fishing? No. <laughs> no I'm a homosexual. <laughs> we don't fish. Oh, I don't know how to use the computer. I just do stinking musicals! <laughs> Look, uh, I've taken an immediate dislike to these people. <laughs> You're the facts lady, aren't yes, you? I am. Yeah, from NBC News, the lovely Natalie Morales, everyone. Hi, Natalie. Is, is there anything else we should know about these people? Well, they love each other very much. They have five kids together. Oh. You know, I, I, when it comes to, to solitaire, I mean, millions of people play. It's the most popular game on the computer, and it's also one of the most addictive. Is that comforting or pathetic? It's both. It's comforting and pathetic, and I think it's Did what we... marriage is about. <laughs> Make each other miserable in the same room or near a stream. <laughs> well, Tracy, how long were you married? I was married for 21 years. Out of the home, how many of those? Around years? the 17th years when she started playing solitaire and I started fishing. <laughs> <laughs> so now that you're not married, what, what's your favorite way to waste time? I chase women. <laughs> literally? All, like literally, <laughs> all day long. Is it hard picking up girls or is it easy now because you're Tracy Morgan? Uh, I, nah. Don't even, because you know what just happened back there. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Yeah, this is hot off the presses. What happened? All right, so he was next to my beautiful assistant, right. who's single, and then beautiful, he easy, and he very, <laughs> he like six inches away, very quietly said, "You and me should go out sometime." And so he went. No, I didn't say it like that. No, I didn't say it like that. I sounded more like Lefty from Donnie Brasco. All right, do it. I said, "You want to check in with me sometime?" Hey. And that didn't work. No. No, it worked. Did lines like that work in the gay community? Well. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, let me take this one. Well, let's see. 
Yeah, yeah you least. know more about game men than Nathan depends does. Depends on what category. If you're talking about the Bears or the Twinks or the Tweakers or the old school Queens, I mean, really, you got to pick a category. <laughs> wow. You can't put them all in a box. There's many colors to the flag. Wow. Would that work in any of those categories? I mean, pickup line. Yeah, that line. Give that line to Nathan. You want to check in with me tomorrow? <laughs> No. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we're going to say who's right and wrong here, the husband or the wife. There's two yes. issues. There's solitaire and fishing. I'll let you split it if you need to. He it, is a little less wrong than she is. Right. Because, you know, he, uh -huh. and at least he's cooking. You know, she was yelling at him. It yeah. was very unpleasant. I'm right. going to side with him. The husband. Okay. Kathy? I'm going to side with the wife because I think what she's really saying is, I wish we were spending time together as long as it isn't fishing. So. <laughs> Now we're on HBO. <laughs> yes! Yes! Oh, I think so. I think so. Uh, so husband, wife, Tracy? What is he fishing for when you got a nice, thick woman like that? <laughs> I'm not you sure. You should make some more know. babies, man. I, I do Forget know. porgies. I don't know what you said. <laughs> but... Oh, I do Yo, know. you got to understand, I, they I, confused I, me from the gate. <laughs> I'm a brother, man. We don't be fishing or playing solitaire. <laughs> we get down, man. <laughs> so I'm confused by them. They got this big house, you know. There is a difference because she be she was my wife. She be the octo mom too. <laughs> If ever there was a doubt that there's a difference between I make black love guys to you and while white you're guys, solitaire. <laughs> I can't believe you can call your women thick. <laughs> We Think are, like we a are. peanut butter and jelly sandwich. <laughs> we are so different. <laughs> All right, I'm ready to make the call. Oh, boy. <laughs> Let's go to Coconut Creek, Florida to meet the actual Hankersons in their dual isolation pods. Ooh. <laughs> Guys, nice to see you. You look great. Thanks for being on our show. Thanks. All right, here's my call. I talked about it with the panel. They really didn't help me out, so I'm going to go solo on this. <laughs> Rosalind, asking someone to sit silently and watch another individual play solitaire is torture. That's how they break terrorists. <laughs> on the solitaire issue, Craig, congratulations, you win. Now, Craig, fishing is fun to do, but it's a one-person sport. Asking someone to watch you fish is water torture. <laughs> Rosalind, on the fishing issue, congratulations, you win. <laughs> so it's a split decision. Now, we like you guys so much, we're going to help you out. I hold in my hand the solution. It's called a deck of cards. It's portable, light, and will allow Rosalind to play solitaire while Craig fishes. Now you can ignore each other together. Panel, would you like to talk to them? You want to ask I them would anything? Ask Rosalind, how the delicious fish was, because it looked great, Rosalind. It's really good, but I don't want to eat fish every night. Uh, I hear you, babe. Yeah. <laughs> you, you look like you look like sexy chocolate to me. Okay, you know what, Tom? I stand there and watch you play solitaire. <laughs> Man, I'm going fishing. You go, I'm go fishing, homie. <laughs> That's a beautiful woman right there. Tracy, keep your eyes off my thick woman. Why? <laughs> well, great talking to you guys. The call's been made. Have fun, Hankerson. Say goodbye, everybody. Bye. All right, when we come back, we'll see what prompted this evil spell. You need a haunting. I'll set you straight. Later, Tom quits and picks a panelist to take over the show. Who is it going to be?
Let's take a pink 59 caddy into classic American Mayfield Heights, Ohio, where we meet the Argies. Teresa is searching for someone outside of her marriage and this dimension. I have a very good time with my wife. My wife's my best friend. I can tell her anything and she'll make me laugh. She'll tell me to relax. It's not that big of a deal. He's the whole package. It's a gigantic inconvenience. I mean, I'm home on my night off, you're off tonight too, and we're not doing anything together because you're gonna go be with the ghost. This is important. This is about not just our life, but about our afterlife. Okay, well, wh why can't we do this earlier? I have to go when the ghosts want me to come, and that's usually at night, because that's when the paranormal activity happens. Hauntings don't always last forever. Sometimes Hauntings go on forever, for they never ever. Ooh. My wife's obsessed with it. She's giving ghost hunting classes. So this has got to be one of the oldest buildings in the area. So we have uh, one confirmed death here. If it has a heartbeat and it dies, she thinks there's a ghost somewhere. There was a reported a spirit of a dog. We were getting some strange readings with the K2 meters. Oh, there it goes again. Cody or something. Cody, that name just came to you? Yeah. All right. This is important. You might not think it's important because you don't believe in what I'm doing. But ghosts were people too, and they demand respect. Okay, if, if you were helping them, if you were helping them, why aren't they paying you? It's ghost hunting. It's, it's not your job, though. But it is a job. This is, this is a hobby. Just like skiing is not a job, skiing is a hobby. This is way more important than skiing. And no, it's just, it's, it's a huge inconvenience. You need a haunting. I'll set you straight. <laughs> and in the past, that you guys have heard uh, phantom sounds. And zip. Yeah. Zip. He also died here. We do know that the dog did die here, right outside the door there. That's weird. Maybe I scared him away. Yeah. Oh, there he is. Yeah. I think until he has that one true paranormal experience, he's always going to have a problem with me doing this. Um, your, a paranormal experience can be life-changing. Can you tell us why you're here? Is there a reason that you're up here? Is there some secret that you want to tell us? Oh, my battery just died. The issue here is who's crazier? She's looking for ghosts. He's jealous of them. Ooh, can I answer that? <laughs> First of all, that's an old camcorder. Yeah. You can't catch ghosts with those camcorders. I try. You can't do it. I would hire her to um, track down the ghost of my career. <laughs> I know he didn't know he yeah. was going to get married to a Ghostbuster. No. Well, who are you going to call? Ghostbusters. <laughs> I do like her equipment. Let, let's watch what happens here. We were getting some strange readings with the K2 meters. It also opens the garage door. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there it goes again. Is that a ghost or is her table ready at Applebee's? <laughs> <laughs> Natalie, what is the K2 meter? Because it, it does look like a kid's toy cell phone. A K2 meter is a piece of equipment that's used to detect spiritual entities, although a lot of paranormal groups don't really use the K2 meter because they feel that the results are not accurate. So can I use that to detect my uncle's spirit? Because he owed me $20. <laughs> I'll look well, into it. Tracy, do you believe in ghosts? Uh, do I believe in ghosts? You know, uh, you yeah, think I, there? I believe in ghosts. You do? Sometimes, yeah, but I, one ghost, you know, because ghosts usually go, ooh. Right. This ghost was like, Aah! And I Ooh. said, why are you doing that? And he said, I died the wrong way. <laughs> you know what's amazing? <laughs> is that you start off by not knowing if you thought they were real or not. And then you recall the whole conversation with them. Right. <laughs> if there was a ghost that you'd like to meet, Tracy, who would it be? I would like to see the ghost of Ernest Borgnine. <laughs> I think he's my biological father. <laughs> I can see Ernest Borgnine. I see that. That's obvious. I, <laughs> I do not need a DNA test. <laughs> Hi, Ernie. Nathan, do you have any weird hobbies? You, uh, you know, musicals, da da da. You're being very closed off. I want to know what you do. Do you do puzzles? I I do. do you I, finger paint. I uh, <laughs> puzzles. I play Scrabble. I, I don't. I mean, I, I, I don't. Dance. Game nights. Roller it's skate. Really Sewing. Trampoline. Quilting. <laughs> Who are you? Are you actually sweating? You are. Actually I'm actually. <laughs> I'm sweating. I'm sweating. Is this the elimination round? I... 
<laughs> who do you sympathize with this in this? I mean, she's running around chasing these ghosts, but he obviously feels a little lonely. Who, who do you think I should call it for? I guess I, I would sympathize with the husband. She should give up the ghost thing and hang out. Yes. Kathy? I'm going to go with the husband on this one. Number one, he's cute. Mm -hmm. And number two, I think they should just do the ghost hunting, you know, Halloween or Halloween Eve. Two nights a year, that's it. But otherwise, I'm with the husband. <laughs> All right. Tracy? I'm going with the wife on this one. What? After your bad ghost experience? I love Ghostbusters, part one and two. Me too. Me too. So you're, you're going with her because there's a couple movies you like? Yeah. <laughs> I'm ready to make the call. <laughs> Let's go to Mayfield Heights, Ohio, and astral project the RGs into our studio. Hello. Hello. Hi, RGs. Thanks for being on our show. Thank you for having us. Thank you. All right, here's my call. Teresa, when you marry yeah. John, you promise to stay together till death do you part. Death. <laughs> that is a much better time to go looking for ghosts. First of all, you'll be one. <laughs> Teresa, life is short. Focus on the living while you're here. John, congratulations. You win. Thank you. Aww. Are you here? <laughs> Could you please tell James Brown that we miss him here? <laughs> I can do that for you, Tracy. Thank you. Not a problem. Yay! You can give him a message. <laughs> You, where do you pick up this stuff? Uh, dead and things at the mall, or dead and things? Dead, bath, and beyond. Dead, bath, and, and beyond. Dead, bath, and beyond. There we have a beyond. winner, ladies and gentlemen. Dead, bath, and beyond. Dead, bath, and beyond. I have a question for you. If if ghosts are invisible, why do they only come out at night? They come out all different times. Just at night. So, you're able to sense them better because, you're... because your other your other senses are heightened. <laughs> Just go get that ghost. <laughs> well, great talking to you guys. The call has been made. Say goodbye to the RGs, everybody. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thanks, guys. When we come back, we're gonna find out if this woman can get this man to eat this dish. What kind of meat? Looks like it might be some kind of a pork or chicken or something. No. Just try it. No. Coming up, Tracy Morgan gives up on English. She said, you I, By the way, I speak fluent Morgan. It's my second language. Can you put me to the test Let's jump in our orange 69 Dodge Charger and outrun the fuzz into Covington, Georgia, <laughs> home of the Dukes of Hazard, and also Kevin and Shantae Reagan. Shantae's cooking it up and Kevin's smacking it down. She was a different type of woman, you know, and she just was smart and she did everything that I'd like to do. And we just fell in love like that. If you pray for somebody to walk through life with and you get that person, I mean, I'm just totally blessed to have Kevin. I'm just totally blessed to have Kevin. <laughs> Uh, not eating no green bean But you want to eat healthy, don't you? You like uh, green beans? I'm not eating no green bean Kevin, I'm making it. It looks like somebody just came in here and just said, Whip. Oh, my God. Kevin. I'm not going but to eat that. But that's not what happened. Meat. We're trying to do things more healthy. The green bean casserole is going to make us healthy. Yes. No, green bean casserole is the start I'm of something I'm healthy, not. and it's good. Look, what is, what's them little chunks in there? That's I'm, meat. Kevin, That's look at this. No, what that kind, is what meat. kind of meat? What kind of meat? Looks like it might be some kind of a pork or chicken or something. No. <laughs> Just try it. No. Nobody eats the green bean casserole for the last 10 years since we've been together. I got chicken. Oh, my God. I'll so you're just going to sit there and eat that chicken? Yeah. And I'm cooking green bean casserole? I'm not going to stop making green bean casserole. Kevin is going to eat the green bean casserole at some point. Just try it. I don't want no green but bean casserole. But you've never even tried the casserole, Kevin. I won't eat it with my yes, mouth. Yes, will. I won't eat it with a mouse. I do not want green bean casserole in this house. So the issue here is, should he have to eat the green bean casserole? I worry when she says she's not sure what the meat is in the... I, I can't blame him. Have you ever eaten a casserole, Nathan Lane? Uh, 
<laughs> Man of mystery. Because we don't know what you do in your downtime. We really don't. You do eat food like us, right? Are you anti-casserole? Did your mom never make you green no. beans? When you were a young child, were you traumatized by a casserole? Um, Open you know, up. Do you yeah. know, like cream soup? If well, you were a casserole, what kind would you be? My, uh, <laughs> my entire life is passing before my eyes. Um, I, uh, uh, well, my mother was, was not a, a great uh, cook. Uh, well, my mother made uh, okra. Okra casserole. Oh, that sounds good. Okra? Okra. What is okra exactly? She's I a talk have no show. idea. She's a talk, She's a talk show, show host. <laughs> she is a very popular daytime talk show host. My taste buds go on sight. If it don't look good, I'm not eating it. That look like it got an eyeball in it. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't eat that if Nathan Lane cooked it for me. I would eat it, but I would want extra eyeballs. That could ruin the marriage. That could ruin the marriage. Just had years. the damn casserole one time. For 10 years, she's been asking for me to eat this casserole. Just try it. He won't just even try it. Just one bite. No. He said, I'm not eating this for if my, it's in my spouse, house. If it's not in a house, house. Not no street house. bean casserole in my in house. house. He should get a recording contract. <laughs> <laughs> and he wouldn't have to eat casseroles. <laughs> Nathan Lane. <laughs> yeah, Look I, at that casserole. Yeah, no. Nathan Lane. No, I wouldn't. I wouldn't want to eat that. But uh, in mm -hmm. all seriousness, <laughs> <laughs> You know, th th I, I don't know if you heard of these things called cookbooks. <laughs> and and perhaps there's a, something else that he might like. Yeah, but Julia wouldn't tell you to eat that. Julia Child? Yes. Oh. She said, do By the way, I speak fluent Morgan. It's my second language. <laughs> I'm bilingual. It's <laughs> um, as he talks, right? Julia Child, and you put me to the casserole. And that's why Meryl lost the Oscar. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Has anyone here ever had green bean casserole? Yes, I've had green, I'm had from green bean casserole. I'm an Irish Catholic family. We call that vegetables, yes. And is it yes. good? No, it's awful. It's horrible and bad for you. What you is Jehovah's Witness food? And then, and then someone holds your hair and you puke it out later. Jehovah's Witness food. <laughs> it's Jehovah's Witness food? <laughs> <laughs> we're, bur we're building bridges here, people. Building bridges. <laughs> and by the way, what it goes with you is frou frou salad, which is jello and fruit. Books. Oh, jello. <laughs> you eat that food, then they make you give out those books. Yes. You, yeah. Wait, as a Jehovah Witness, you eat you, that. You and go. Then you, you have to give out the door books on there. Yes. They're like, come on. I'm interested in being yeah, Jehovah Witness. Come on in. Yeah. Eat this and, and then give these out. Yes. It's There's called, a watchtower. It's called casseroling. Yeah. You do it door to door. Yes. <laughs> Those. <laughs> wow. What's the healthiest thing you eat, Kathy? Uh, I try to have salads every so often, but I, I, I really don't like it. I don't care for it. I like pie, cookies, cupcakes, and donuts <laughs> are my food groups. Those are good. <laughs> What's the healthiest thing you eat, Tracy? Uh, Wendy's. <laughs> How do you keep your, your girlish figure? I'm hungry and bitter. Oh. <laughs> Glad I asked. <laughs> When we come back, we're going to meet Kevin and Shantae Reagan, the actual green bean casseroleans themselves. Coming up, this colossal meltdown. Don't eat it! Your teeth are going to fall out! Stay on your path, Shantae! Until you identify the meat! <laughs> Help me out. Green bean casserole. 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 The green bean casserole. Green bean casserole. Green bean casserole. Any last thoughts before we go to the vote? No. No? <laughs> <laughs> no, let's go. So what do you Wait. think? Should he have to try it? No, she's crazy. <laughs> it's, it's a horrible, horrible looking dish. She doesn't even know what's in it. <laughs> no, someone should stop her. Call a cop. <laughs> Please. Heavy? Of course he should try it. After 10 years, make sure he has some roughage, because that looks like it's going to sit in him like a brick. Casserole king? The way to a man's heart is to his stomach? Mm -hmm. That's going to run right through him. It's going to go down rough, come up easy. <laughs> so bottom line, should husband or wife? Oof. I'm going for the husband. For the husband. Yeah. Husband, husband, husband wife. wife. He should at least try it. Yes, at least try it. OK, I'm ready to make the call. <laughs> Sorry, I, I used to be a prize fighter. I didn't mention that. <laughs> champ, go to your corner, Champ. Cut his eye. Sit down, Champ. Sit down, Champ. Sit down, Champ. Sit down, Champ. Cut his eye. Cut his eye. You're okay. 
You're okay. Spitting this. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Got it. Got it. You got this one. You got this one. <sighs> Let's go to Covington, Georgia, and bring up the real life Reagans in their casserole kitchen. looked a little bit suspect, but what good dish doesn't look a bit suspicious? He could at least try my casserole. Don't agree with her like Don't that. <laughs> I agree, Shantae. <laughs> Thank you so no. much, Kathy. My girl. <laughs> Come on, guys. Don't take this the wrong way, but you sound a tad defensive. <laughs> <laughs> I am a light bit defensive. Thank you. He could at least Thank try you. my green bean casserole. Don't do it. For 10 years. Oh. No. <laughs> Don't do it. Don't do it. <laughs> All right. Everybody's very passionate about the green bean casserole. Here's my call. And I think that Kathy kind of nailed it on the head. Kevin, if your wife makes you something to eat, you have to eat it. If you can't eat it, you have to at least try it. She's spending time on it. She's making it for you. It's rude. Shantae, congratulations. You win. Yeah! Now, Thank Kevin, you so much. hold on, hold on, Kevin. I'm going to make this interesting. If you're willing to try it for the first time right here on our show and give it a chance, I will reverse my call. <laughs> because, Shantae, if your husband doesn't like something, you got to respect that and cook something else. Will you try the green bean casserole? Come on, baby. All you got to do is try it. That casserole. He's wrong for this. Do it. Should he do Come it, on, audience? Baby. Try it. I'll let her win. I'll let her win that one. Oh. I'll let her win that Baby, one. What's wrong for this? This is what we go through every day. Here. No. Come on. There you go. It's good, right? I win now, right? No, that's the that doesn't count. He at least needs to have a full mouthful. I agree, Shante. No, no time. Kevin, what does it taste like? Garbage. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Does that count as a taste? No, no, no. no. That doesn't count as a taste, He's Kevin. Do a whole Kevin, last shot. Do you want to take a bite of it, a real bite of it? I already oh, did. Take a, that wasn't a bite. Yeah. You got to take a real bite of it. Oh, okay. It looks good. You got to take a whole mouthful. Kev, don't Open do up. it. Do it, Kevin. Open up. Here he goes. Here he goes. Oh. Not going to do it. been made. Shantae wins. Say goodbye, everybody. Yay! Thank you so much. Yay! When we come back, we're going to find out to boop or not to boop. Coming up, I learned something new. What's a fruffle? It's two gay guys in a statue. You're gayer than I am. I know. Kids, we don't have a lot of time, but we've got one more fight that's got to end tonight. Let's meet the Salonara Wise. I was very nervous, and I pulled out the ring, and I just set it on the table, and I said, I have something to ask you. Well, at first and, I said, this is not happening here. You got so embarrassed. So I'm, I'm kind of scooting it under the plate. I finally just said, okay, will you marry me or not? And he said, of course I will. So... <laughs> Man has a Betty Boop in their kitchen. Me? No knocks against Betty, but what is wrong with having that a Betty Boop? It doesn't match the style of the house. We're, I mean, come it on. is the focal point of the kitchen, Michael. I would rather have a focal point of some place to sit. People come in, Nobody in here. Who would sit here? Who would sit? There's not even enough space to sit here. A, a small. What are we gonna do? I've seen one of those, those pub good. tables. No. All right. The word tacky. I mean. Excuse you know, me. It's just. It's. I don't know. Maybe kitschy. It is not tacky. I think everybody likes Betty Boop. You walk in and she's kind of looking up and smiling and I just can't see her not being part of my life anymore. You have to learn to um, let me have a little bit of say-so in what goes on in this house. You have some say-so. Show me my say-so.
So the issue here is Betty Boop kitschy or tacky? Can I feel this? <laughs> this may single-handedly put an end to the fight for gay marriage. <laughs> Uh, or at least it proves that gay couples can be as stupid as straight couples. <laughs> First of all, that fellow who is fond of the Betty Boop condiment holder, uh, he seems to have a Bob's Big Boy haircut. Yeah. So there's def definitely a theme running here. It's just that it's, it's, it's so large. Obviously, size is important to him. <laughs> And uh, it's very obvious that the dog is, wants to pee on Betty. Yeah. <laughs> so she's against it. That's two, two, to, two against one. I mean, this is like, if this were a straight couple, it would be a stuffed polar bear in a New York Giants sweatshirt. <laughs> and the wife would say, this goes in the garage. <laughs> right. You know, Betty Boop is great. I love Betty Boop. Betty Boop, yeah. Betty does have a hotter ass than the guy on the left. I mean, she's, pr she's pretty hot. And I would, you know, this is not the first time I've seen fetish fetishism. Right. Or said it. Right. But, <laughs> fetishism. But anyway, I, I think that they should consider entering um, what the gays call a thruple with Betty Boop and a experimenting what? and taping it and putting it out there. Yes. A thruple? Don't be afraid of a thruple until you've tried it. What's a thruple? It's two gay guys in a statue. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I think that Betty should stay because she's kitschy. Uh, I, I know the other guy wants to replace her with a pub table, which I think is cold. So I think she, she greets the people walking in the kitchen and says, Hi, who wants a plastic cheeseburger? She <laughs> looks psycho, me. though. She looks psycho. I can understand She's been working. Why. She's Betty got a double shift. Up. She shaved her eyebrows off and then penciled them back on. <laughs> subtle psycho subtlety, man. Subtlety, psycho. Explain to me in the gay community, kitschy and tacky. It okay. seemed like it was, well, what did kitchy you... Kitschy is expected and desired, and tacky is too much girl. <laughs> You're gayer than I am. I know. So... I, I know. I know. I walk out of my bathroom, it's like a pride fest for one. I know, I agree. Now, now here's a fun fact. You know, Michael, who's the anti-booper, he has his own icon celebrity doll collection, including a Cher Barbie doll. A oh, Cher Barbie doll. Is that, that tacky is, or That's kitchen? just fabulous. <laughs> it's a whole other category. So David pro-boop, Michael anti-boop. Who do you go for? Oh, I I'm anti-boop. You're anti-boop. You're yes. going for Michael anti-boop. Pro-boop. Pro-boop, David pro-boop. Mm -hmm. I'm going with the boop. <laughs> Just because it sounds like something Betty dirty. Boop, but Betty Boop? <laughs> yeah. You don't know what it is, but you want to get it on with the boop. Yeah. yeah. Could be Spanish. I don't know. Boop. <laughs> I got a dick for Latin women. You know, Betty Boop. I just want to point out that Tracy has hit on every wife in the story and now a statue. <laughs> you know my style. I like it. Can we have a winner? <laughs> All right. Now, you better be careful, Nathan Lane. You might be next. <laughs> you know me, baby. I'm down with OPP. You know me. <laughs> Fact lady, what does OPP mean? Don't answer one. that. <laughs> Coming up, find out who Tom picks to take over his job tonight. In this instance, I have to say... Oh, fingers crossed. This house was built in 1955, and the kitchen represents that period, 1955. And so does Betty Boo. No, she doesn't. She perfectly represents it's that. David, it goes back to we need, it needs to be functional. We need some place to sit. Why does it have to be functional? Why can't we just have something that looks stylish and cool? All right, being this is our last couple, yes. I'm going to let one of you make the last call, all right? Who is it going to be? In this instance, I have to say, being you are an expertise on the subject of gay men, Kathy. Yeah. I'm the gayest dude on this panel, let's be honest. Now, let me tell you how it works. OK. You think about it, you can talk about it, whatever you want to do, the same way I've been handling it all show. OK. And when it's time to do it, you say, I'm ready to make the call. When you do that, real people will appear up on that screen. OK. And then you look them in the eye, and you tell them who wins and who loses and why. David Pro-Boop or Michael Anti-Boop? Okay. When you're ready, you say, I'm ready to make the call. I'm ready to make the call. <laughs> what happened? Oh. The Salonero Wise, everybody. Hi, everybody. Hi, everybody. Hello, David and Michael. This is Kathy Griffin. 
Hey, Kathy. Hey, girls. Now look. <laughs> Is that bad? Um, I do want to know how long has Betty Boop been in your lives? About five years. Too long. Oh. <laughs> uh, now let me consult with the rest of my panel quickly. And are you pro or anti boop? Uh, I'm uh, anti boop. Okay. Anti boop, Sir? Nathan Lane. I'm pro boop. You're pro boop. We knew that. Going in. All right. <laughs> That's not a surprise to anyone here. Certainly not Nathan. I'm now, pro boop because Tracy's pro boop. Now, are you? Do you get to weigh in as a panelist? Yeah, because you, you're the ref now. I'm the panelist. Okay, but I get member. I make the final call. I'm the ref. You do. You make the final right. call. Okay. Right. Can we ask? Uh, do you have any other Betty Boop memorabilia that you're? We did, but somebody got rid of it all. And where's the share doll? Oh. <laughs> oh. It's in the closet where it should be. <laughs> <laughs> But she's very small, and, you know, she doesn't take up a bunch of space, so. so Just like Cher. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, in this case, I'm ready to make my ruling. Go ahead. Oh, sorry. Um, I am ruling on behalf of, if I'm getting this right, David, which means they get to keep the statue. Pro boop. Pro boop. Oh, 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 David, yeah. Congratulations, David. <laughs> Thanks, Kathy. Oh, Kathy, no. <laughs> you want to give him a reason why? Yes, the reason why is because I think that Betty Boop is a beloved American icon who unifies people of all sexual orientations. And I think with her help, we can march on Washington and change things. <laughs> Well, thanks, guys. Say goodbye to Salonero Wise, everybody. Bye, guys. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Yeah. And for being such great sports, all our couples tonight will be swept away on a romantic getaway to Sandals Luxury, included Royal Bahamian Spa Resort and offshore <laughs> Nassau Bahamas Island. <laughs> yeah. We'd like to thank our panel of experts, Tracy Morgan. Nathan Lane. And especially to all our couples tonight, thank you for letting us into your marriage. It's worth fighting for. Now kiss and make up. Good night, everybody.